The main reason why ordinary citizens come out onto the streets is because there is some universal right that is infringed upon, like the vote, or beating up of students and international journalists on the Maidan, as happened in 2013, where people look at this infringement and realize that it can happen to any one of us. And that's the fascinating thing about what I learned about Ukrainians when I did dozens of focus groups and conducted hundreds of interviews with protest participants, both activists and ordinary citizens. And they all told me that it was the moment when they realized this universal right was taken away that they became activated. One story of a woman we were uh, interviewing in Donetsk city. Uh, this was in 2013. She was a Yanukovych uh, supporter previously. She was a Russian speaker. She didn't identify with a lot of the things we would assume people protesting in the early weeks of the Euromaidan would be associating themselves with. And she told one of our interviewers that the reason I'm out here is because my stupid son is exactly the kind of person who would go out onto the Maidan in the middle of the night. She was saying that everyone has a right to have whatever political views or ideas they want, and we can't beat young students up. And I thought that was very powerful because she didn't agree with any of the policies that are associated with the Yevro Maidan, but she really thought this young people should not get beaten up for voicing their political views. People use the word Maidan to refer to the most recent uh, moment of mass mobilization that occurred in Ukraine. I actually like to use the term Yevromaidan, and let me explain to you why. Maidan in Ukrainian simply means square. So the reason why we call the moments of mass mobilization Maidans is because they tend to take place on this very large square in the center of Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, which is called Maidan Nezaleznosti. I think it's much more fitting to call them by their particular names, be it the revolution on the granite in 1990, the Uk Ukraine without Kuchma, Ukraina bez Kuchme in 2000-2001, the Orange Revolution in 2004, or the Yevromaidan. Now, to be clear, there are multiple so-called smaller Maidans that happen between these moments of mass mobilization. So between 2004 and 2013-14, you actually have approximately five or six different Maidans for taxes, about language, about education, uh, and various other issues. We just had the 30th anniversary of the Revolution on the Granite, or Revolution na Hraniki. And I think many of the people, if you speak to them, who helped organize the Revolution on the Granite, they will tell you that they not only emulated and respected um, these, these previous generations of dissident activists, but they also had communications with them directly. When I interviewed activists, specifically activists from the Orange Revolution, these were people actually my age, we're all in our 40s now, or, or, or going into our 40s, but they were the 20 year olds back then. And they very much had this romantic notion of activism. They had examples of pamphlets from a decade, two decades, three decades earlier. They had, uh, you know, examples of illicit literature. Uh, and some of them had direct contact with previous generations of activists and dissidents. At the same time, they repeatedly told me that they believe Ukraine is going through an evolution. Right? They didn't like the term revolution, which I think for young people to reject the term of revolution is actually quite interesting. Now, the kinds of evolutions that they saw depended on their different ideological leanings. Some focused more on the nation, right, the Ukrainian nation, Ukrainian language, and these kinds of things. Other focused on liberal democratic rights. I think it's really important to tell the history of Ukrainian activism. This is, in fact, a protest nation, and there is a long history of protest engagement in Ukraine that has, even to this day, I think, been sadly understudied.
Ну, ты там пропишешь мне, да? Сын, наш не ворозенький, 